Welcome to my classroom. This is Justin. Today I'm going to talk about independent sample data test. This test, independent sample data test, is one of the most frequently used statistical analysis in the between group design. Um, the equation of a, a independent sample t test is, um, or I will start with the basic equation of a t test is t equal to the first group mean, um, the sample mean minus population mean divided by standard error. So the standard error is uh, the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution and this one is usual equation standard deviation square standard deviation of the sample square divided by root n so this is a fundamental equation now when it comes to a, um, the uh, independent sample data you have instead of one sample you have two samples so you will have two standard deviations also so that's a, so when you think about the equation this equation will have some changes when you consider independent sample data so let us say uh, the objective of independent sample data test is to compare two groups two group means sample means so uh, let us start with the hypothesis in that context i have two uh, group uh, group one is um, let us say married men m married men and other group is uh, single men okay like and i i assume that the null hypothesis for me is um, happiness of married men is same as uh, happiness of single men and the alternative hypothesis is uh, married men and hypoth happiness of a single are not same so this is a two-tail test because um, it has two possible ends either male can be greater than um, i'm sorry the married can be greater than um, the single people come in terms of the happiness or uh, the single may be greater than uh, married people in terms of happiness there are two tails for us so this is a two tail test so uh, let us come back to the uh, context here um, uh, possible sample values also that is uh, this is married pe uh, men and this is um, the single men so assume some values mean of the uh, this group uh, married men happiness is let us say um, 30 and the standard deviation of the this group is um, 3 and n is 10 like that and the second group mean is um, 40 and standard deviation of the second group is 4 and n is 10 assume some values like that okay so how do we calculate the um, t value for uh, independent sample t test so this equation of the t test is a basic equation of the t value how do you use this equation in this context so uh, for us um, if you take this equation you have mean of uh, sample and mean of the population but in this context i don't have a population here i have two means mean one mean two so the t test equation would be the first group mean minus second group mean same as this context this is sample and population here first group and second group mean value now look into the standard deviation standard error here so i have standard um, deviation square divided by root n so this is when we have only one sample now we have two samples so you have to use a pool standard deviation here the pool standard deviation is uh, root of uh, standard deviation of the first group um, i'm using standard deviation symbol here actually s has to be used to, to represent the uh, sample um, just uh, explanation sake okay first group standard deviation square divided by n1 number of um, elements in the sample one second group standard deviation square divided by n2 yeah this is a pool uh, standard deviation um, standard error uh, so this equation j is used when standard deviation of first group is not equal to standard deviation of second group that means equal variance is not assumed this is a common way in which we do the analysis otherwise you need to test whether this is correct or not okay now see that so if it is not really same uh, you can go for this equation what if these things are same you can go for another equation i'm not going to use that equation here but still i'll show you what is that equation if uh, standard deviation of the first group is equal to standard deviation of the second group you can use another equation where the upper part would be same and the lower part that is standard error this entire part okay standard error would be um, first group uh, number minus n1 i'm sorry number of uh, members in the first group minus one standard deviation of the first group square plus n2 minus one standard deviation of the second group square uh, divide by n1 plus n2 minus 2 
and all these things are in the root into um, 1 minus multiply it 1 minus n1 plus 1 minus n2 like that hope you can see this in the corner okay anyway so this is the equation of a uh, um, the standard error if uh, first group standard deviation second group standard deviations are equal otherwise we say that we say that uh, when equal variants are assumed this is the equation that we use i'm going to proceed with this particular equation this is a common equation that we generally use just use the values here um, first group 30 minus 40 divided by um, root of um, 9 by 10 plus 4 um, 16 by 10 so this is minus 10 divided by 25 25 root of 25 by 10 so this is um, minus 10 divided by root of 2.5 yeah the value uh, would be um, I have calculated this before so I know the t correct value here this is 6.34 like that so this is my minus this is my t value so what did I get in this context I um, did a uh, I calculated t value uh, so that I can understand what's the chance uh, for these two values to occur 30 and 40 and occur uh, that means a difference of 10 30 and 40 a difference of 10 uh, to uh, occur um, uh, if these two groups are taken from same population itself that is when null hypothesis is true that means when this condition is true how does the um, curve look like that means a curve assume that it's a t curve with a degree of freedom of um, n1 plus n2 minus 2 that is 10 plus 10 uh, minus 2 that's 18 so when degree of freedom is 18 you get a kind of t curve so t curve is this and the center of this curve would be 0 okay and uh, uh, my results tells me um, assuming um, this value I mean um, assumed with the assumed mean this value uh, the 30 value is 6.34 standard deviation that means 6.34 standard deviation away from it okay see that so the difference between just say that this is 40 using this value okay this is 40 and this value is 30 corresponding value here is 30 so this difference is um, 6.34 standard deviation away from that so what's the benefit of doing this I can calculate what's the area under this this particular point I have calculated that the value is almost 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 that means chance for a difference between 30 and 40 a 10 difference uh, to occur in this condition is um, this much less that means uh, 0 0.001 percentage chance to occur a difference like this if this um, two values are from same population um, I would say that oh such a rare possibility like that I would say that okay now this uh, is uh, could be wrong I don't have much evidence for that but there's an evidence to believe that these two things are from two different kind of population okay so when you take a uh, value like that if it's a two-tailed test you will take this minus 6.34 standard deviation and this area also could be positive also plus 6.34 standard deviation this area plus this area how much area would be that that would be calculated as a significance value in this context so this is how we do a, uh, a, a independent sample t test now the question is um, uh, how do you calculate this that you need the the table and also uh, otherwise uh, generally when you do this uh, in t, t test in a manual calculation how do you work with that you need to uh, decide the level of significance first that means alpha error the alpha error uh, generally we keep uh, a um, five percentage that means alpha error uh, that means 0 0.05 level right uh, this five percentage means uh, the remaining uh, 95 percent confidence interval that we are working with so we'll take a, a 95 percent confidence interval something like here okay 95 percentage and remaining 2.5 here uh, 2.5 here percentage so this point let us say this point so this will be a cutoff point for us okay here you have a cutoff point like this 
this will decide first so 2.5 this side 2.5 this side together uh, 5 percentage that is 5 percentage is um, indicating 0 0.05 level of significance now this is a cutoff point so what does it mean um, this particular value um, is uh, in the case of degree of freedom 18 uh, the score would be 2.10 okay here also this minus 2 point and plus 2.10 like this now if your uh, standard deviation the t calculated t values uh, more than that more than means above this value or above this value okay so if it is more towards extreme beyond this 2.10 or plus uh, 2.10 we say that chance to that event to occur uh, is um, lesser than 0 0.05 level I um, mean chance for that is lesser than five percentage uh, we generally in this context we generally say that okay um, there's not much evidence for null hypothesis to be true uh, i will suggest for uh, alternate hypothesis if i work with a um, 99 percentage confidence interval um, that means alpha level will be one percentage error that means 0 0.01 level of significance now in this context um, the value tend to be that means this area 99 percentage interval and you have you have 0.5 percentage and 0.5 percentage okay now this cutoff point this particular cutoff point when you take the um, when you convert with the um, table for a degree of freedom of 18 this value tend to be 2.88 uh, okay and this is minus okay here the value somewhere here would be uh, plus 2.88 that tells me if uh, the calculated t value that i get is uh, beyond this particular value this particular value and this particular value if it is beyond this particular value uh, the chance for that to occur is uh, one percentage so it's more confidently i can say that hey there's not much evidence for null hypos to be true there are much more evidences to i have a lot of evidence to believe that uh, alternative hypos could be true okay now this is the uh, concept of uh, the way in, in which we calculate t value when you manually do that one okay now this is the independent sample t test so my judgment is my values way beyond this um, 0 0.05 0 0.01 and maybe way beyond it so i would say that there is very 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 less chance that these two values 30 and 40 are from uh, same population itself so i would say that they are significantly different so this is a two sample um, uh, two independent sample t test so what are the common assumptions of independent sample t test the, the most important assumption is normality the, the data has to be normal distributed so you have two data here this is group one and this group two both group has to be normal distributed this has to be normal distributed and this has to be normal distributed if any of these values are not normal distributed you cannot go ahead with the uh, independent sample t test and second one is the standard deviation homogeneity of variance the first group standard deviation and second group standard deviation has to be uh, homogeneous uh, almost uh, equal but you know this assumption is not a very rigid assumption because even if uh, this is not equal there are ways to handle it using some kind of correction and some equation difference like that so that's but when you write the the, the assumption that is one of the common assumption and third assumption is uh, there should be independence uh, in the observation that means every observation the 10 observation within this sample they have supposed they are supposed to be independent and these 10 are supposed to be independent that's first level of independent that means inside a group data has to be independent inside the second group all observation has to be independent and second level is group one and group two uh, married group and uh, the the single group they has to be these two group has to be um, independent that means observation in one group should not influence the observation the second group okay that's how it, it works and the other one is uh, other assumption is um, extreme there shouldn't be any extreme values um, uh, it has to be really uh, in a, a normal curve a pattern itself that means there won't be much extreme values and the next assumption is uh, uh, you know that is uh, not a rigid assumption that's a kind of controversy related to that one so i'll just say the assumption here the assumption is the data has to be randomly selected from the population so um, that means uh, either simple random sampling or stratified random sampling uh, or systematic sampling these sampling methods has to be used um, to do a t-test um, that's a kind of controversy uh, and uh, these are the common assumptions of uh, independent sample t-test and what kind of questions can be asked from this section 
uh, i guess uh, the common um, question can be asked on the section is related to this degree of freedom you may have to find ask to find out the sample size based on the degree of freedom or calculate degree of freedom based on the sample size both possibilities are there or um, you may get the values of mean differences and standard error together the mean difference and standard error like mean difference and standard standard error and you may be asked to calculate the degree of freedom um, i'm sorry asked to calculate the t value or make a judgment whether these values are different or not so to make a judgment you need to know um, the what would be the the cutoff point 0 0.05 level and 0 0.01 level based on the particular degree of freedom so uh, they cannot ask any in none of the question papers can ask a question like that without giving the table so generally uh, if they want to ask a question like that they would say that the sample size is large enough so when sample size is large enough this particular uh, value that means cutoff point for 0 0.05 level is found to be nearby 1.96 near uh, if the sample size is nearby 1000 this value tend to be 1.96 that is cutoff point and if a level of significance is 0.1 percentage that means 99 percent is confidence interval 0 0.01 level of significance this value tend to be 12.5 uh, for the two tail test so uh, only when sample size is higher okay almost near by thousand so if you get a condition where sample size is large bigger uh, and um, uh, the standard is given um, standard is given and stand mean difference is given then you can calculate t value and make a judgment based on that if t value that you calculate is more than 1.96 you can say that uh, the value this is significant um, in at point sort of five level and if the value is more than 2.5 you are you can say that the, the value is t value significant uh, in at point sort of one level like that that judgment also can be taken and assumptions can be asked what are the common assumptions of t test and i guess that's it that's a common questions can be asked from this this section yeah bye from my channel see you in the next class